In the last lecture, we learned how to use for each method to loop over an array. In this lecture, we will use for each method to loop over a map and a set. Here, we have a very simple map called employee and this map has four entries. And this is the key for the entry and this is the value for the entry. Similarly, this is the key for the second entry. This is the value for that second entry. So let's go ahead and let's log this map in the console to see. If I save the changes, you can see that this employee map has been logged and it has these four entries. Now what we want is, we want to loop over this employee map using for each method. So let's see how to do that. So in order to use the for each method on a map, on the map name, we call for each method. And to this for each method, we need to pass a callback function. So here, let's pass an anonymous function as the callback function for this for each method. Now, in case of arrays, the callback function uh, takes three parameters. The first parameter is the current element. The second parameter is the index of the current element. And the third parameter is the array on which we are looping over, right? But in case of maps, the first parameter for the callback function is the value of an entry. Okay, so let's call it maybe value. The second parameter is the key for that entry. Okay, and the third parameter is the map itself. So let's simply call it map. So here, when we are looping over this employee map using this for each method, for the first iteration, this value 101 will be assigned to this value parameter. This key employee ID will be assigned to this key parameter. And this employee map will be assigned to this map parameter. Okay. In the same way, for the second iteration, this value Steve will be assigned to this value parameter. This key name will be assigned to this key parameter. And then this employee map will be assigned to this map parameter. Now we can go ahead and write the logic which we want to execute for each iteration in case of a map inside this callback function. So let's say we want to log a message in the console saying that value of and then let's use the key. So key is and then the value. Let's save the changes. And here you can see it has logged value for employee ID is 101, value for name is Steve, value for gender is male, and value for salary is 20,000. Okay, so this is very straightforward. So if you know how to use for each method on an array, then understanding this is not a big deal, right? So let's also compare this with looping over an array using for each method. So here, let's go ahead and let's call this for each method on this names array. So let's say names dot for each and again we need to pass a callback function here and this callback function takes again three parameters the first parameter is the current element of the array the second parameter is the index of the array and the third parameter is the array itself right so here if you notice in case of maps we don't have index so instead of index, this for each method passes the key of the map to the second parameter. In case of arrays, for the first parameter, the for each method passes the current element of the array on which it is looping, right? But in case of maps, the for each method passes the value of the current entry to the first parameter. And in case of array, for the third parameter, it gets assigned with the array on which we are looping over. In case of maps, the third parameter gets assigned with the map on which we are looping over using for each method. Okay, so this is very straightforward. Now let's see how to loop over a set using for each method. So let's go ahead and let's comment these codes from here. And now let's go ahead and let's loop over this role set using for each method. So again, on this 
roles let's call for each method and again we need to pass a callback function here and just like maps and arrays this callback function when we are calling this for each method on a set the callback function of the set method is going to take again three parameters so the first parameter will be the current entry of the set so let's maybe call it entry now in case of sets we don't have a key or we don't have an index but despite that when we are using this for each method on a set it takes the second argument so for now let's simply call it key okay and again the third argument will be the map on which we are it i mean the set on which we are iterating so let's simply call it set all right now when we are looping over this role set using this for each method so for each iteration to this entry the current entry will be assigned and to this set the set on which we are looping over will be assigned but what will be assigned to this key parameter because in case of sets we don't have a key or we don't have any index right so let's see what we get for this key parameter by logging it so inside this callback function let's go ahead and let's log the key and the entry so let's log entry and let's append some string and let's also log key and let's go ahead and save the changes so here you can see for key it is logging the entry value which i mean for entry it is, it is logging the entry value which is admin and for key also it is logging the entry value okay so since in case of sets we don't have a key or an index so there is no value that will make sense for key in case of sets right so while using for each on sets the keys parameter does not make any sense at all it doesn't even have to be there right so the developers who designed this for each method for sets they could have simply omitted the second argument but if they have done that then this for each loop on sets has been different from others that means the for each method on maps and arrays right and that would have then created confusion in developers therefore it was decided to keep the same signature that is the same three parameters in the callback function of for each method for arrays maps and sets and that's why the second parameter here when we are using this for each method on a set is set with the value with the entry itself okay now again just like in case of array the second and third parameter is optional in case of sets and maps all right so i hope using for each method on maps and sets is now clear to you it's very straightforward and there is nothing to be confused about but still if you have any questions related to for each method on maps or sets then you can feel free to ask it this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day